Welcome to a new edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. In today's edition, we'll discuss the importance of having a good work clamp connection and the alternatives that you have when replacing the factory supplied clamp. Some people refer to the work clamp as the ground clamp, but because the clamp may be used either in the positive or negative polarity position, it really isn't considered a ground, although you may hear some older welders refer to it this way. Whether you call it a work clamp or a ground clamp, Many of the problems experienced with poor arc starting and stability can be attributed to poor work clamp condition or attachment. Here you can see that this MIG clamp has seen better days. It's time to put a new one on. MIG is particularly sensitive to poor connections and results in hard starts and even excess spatter at the beginning of a weld. Now, this is the stock work clamp that comes with most of our MIG, TIG, and stick welders currently. It's rated for 300 amps and is fairly well made, though it's not exactly a heavy duty version. We supply these clamps as part of our startup package. There are other work clamp alternatives out there and that's what we want to look at now. One of the old time favorites is the bronze heavy duty spring loaded clamp similar to this one. These do not corrode and are resistant to bending or breaking. The price can range from these clamps from $10 up to $50 depending upon the manufacturer. The disadvantage of these clamps is that over time they tend to lose their grip and have a small contact area. The springs also can be dislodged if they become weak. One of my personal favorites is the steel clamp with intersecting jaws. This particular one we have today is a Linco EG300. This is a medium duty clamp and is well priced at about $8 retail. This type clamp has jaws that clamp firmly down on the metal with a high tension spring. There are three possible contact points that make a good connection. When closed, the contact points overlap each other, which further helps to create good contact, particularly on thinner pieces of metal. A popular alternative is the magnetic clamp. This clamp can carry fairly large amounts of current. It creates a strong magnetic bond against the metal and a brass spring loaded contact makes the primary electrical connection. It's easy to install almost anywhere. However, this type of clamp is ineffective on aluminum, some stainless steels, and any non-ferrous metal. Another issue is that it tends to attract a lot of slag and metal particles over time and can interfere with the connection and magnetic bond to the metal. Changing out the factory supplied clamp is a fairly straightforward process. Simply remove the cable lug retaining nut with a 14 millimeter wrench. Then slide the old cable off, pulling it through the cable hole in the handle. At this point, you really need to decide if you should replace the end lug or not. You should check out the amount of corrosion and fraying of the copper wire. You should also make sure that the hole in the terminal lug will fit your new clamp. Here, we've selected a new Linco lug to replace the old one. This is a Linco L26. Any heavy copper or brass lug will do, but since I had them at the supply store, this is the one I went with. Next, take a pair of heavy cable cutters or dykes and snip off the old lug at the end. Now be careful to remove enough of the cable to remove any corrosion that may remain. You need to estimate the amount of cable insulation that you need to remove. You don't want to move too much or too little. Be careful not to cut into the wire as you remove the insulation. Slide the lug on to make sure it's a good fit. If it is, the cable insulation should come into contact with the sleeve as the cable bottoms out inside the lug. Lock the terminal lug upright with a small clamp or vise with the open end pointing up. Take a small torch and begin to heat the lug until it gets hot. Then take some rosin cord solder and begin to melt some inside the lug. You only need to fill the lug about one third of the way up. If you put too much solder, when you put the cable in, it'll come out and it'll go everywhere.
Before the lug begins to cool, quickly insert the cable all the way into the lug. If needed, continue to apply heat with the other hand. If you don't have a tool to crimp the cable, simply use a hammer and a cold chisel to give the lug a crease and firmly hold the cable. To install the clamp with a new lug, simply reverse the removal procedure. Make sure the nut is fully tight and locked down. Thanks for watching today's video. If you have any questions about this procedure or any questions about Everlast products, give us a call at the number listed above.